Hello everyone, uh, this is an introduction to international tendering. My name is Lucia Hegerusova and I'm a project manager in Pedal Consulting based in Slovakia. I have a um, past work experience in research funding agencies of the European Commission, also in Brussels. So this is our first webinar in a series of five that we are going to be doing, which we hope will demonstrate the enormous potential that exists uh, through bidding for public procurement tenders all over Europe. We also hope to demonstrate and tell you all about how Tenderio can help you win that business. So if your business is selling goods, um, please don't hesitate to limit yourself uh, to a market to only one country. So let's start uh, by looking at what this opportunity is. Let's look at a few figures here, which uh, are quite impressive, by my opinion. We see 2,500 billion euros spent on the products and services by European public bodies every single year. It's a huge amount of uh, money spent. It's actually 15, 16 sorry, percent of Europe's entire GDP, in fact. Um, it's a master business all over as well. 15 to 20 percent of global GDP is produced by public procurement. But we have to say that. 25% mm, of contracts that are awarded uh, and that huge amount of uh, business is taking place um, one out of ten goes only to one bidder so only one company is bidding and uh, most of public tenders receive only two to four offers so the um, competition for these businesses is small Let's see, um, 10,000 tenders every year are cancelled because simply no offers are received at all. And um, only 1.26 of all European SMEs are actually participating in bidding for, for this business abroad. So it's a, it's a really very small number. Of course, it's a very huge opportunity. So why SMEs are particularly missing out this opportunity? Well, there are lots of reasons. The knowledge about what is available is not particularly well known. Uh, SMEs are finding out where these tenders are, what is available um, and how they go for it. The understanding how bidding process works is complex. Um, businesses are usually um, busy with their own markets. Understanding how to bid is a complicated procedure. There's a feeling that local rules and regional rules and regulations, let's put, let's put it this way, that exist in, uh, uh, in different countries are complicated and um, understanding uh, uh, of those is often a barrier to bidding abroad. Then, of course, it's a language. Translating local content is difficult for many. Many tenders are done in English, but even so, um, translating local content to understanding local needs is a barrier. So, if, of course, if we think the way um, I don't have a chance to do it, uh, why would I need to do it anyway? It's going to be a, a going to get a local firm. This is a, a also a problem attitude. And this is where Tenderio comes in. Uh, Tenderio is a, is a new service developed with the support of the European Commission through a funding program. And it is primarily um, a network of consultancies who are experienced in winning tenders abroad. There are many and uh, you will hear about it uh, during this webinar. There are 14 companies involved at the moment that cover 30 European countries and uh, speak 16 different languages. And uh, these companies are there to help you with business abroad. We provide uh, country-specific guidelines to wind tenders in specific countries so we get over the barrier of local rules and regulations.
We also provide uh, training sessions, uh, both online and physical, on how to win tenders. And we have a bidding lab where we support companies in their efforts to win tenders. Uh, we provide also bench, uh, benchmarking, uh, benchmarking sorry, services. You can see how other companies in your specific business are bidding, what they, what they bid, how they are bidding. And you can, you can match this. Importantly, we are, we are uh, matching up with the partners on the, on the ground in the countries where you are bidding. And it's a very important feature. So we have a, um, matchmaking service with local companies uh, and you will be on the on the on the work with partners with to strengthen your bid uh, and we will um, help you with it and will support you in your bid writing plus and this is a, a big plus uh, there is a a tender search engine. We offer thousands of new tenders online every day, and we uh, would love you to view if you join these tenders where they are, um, the way they are, they they tra the translation services work for those uh, serving the tenders. So overall, you are able to. With Tenderio to select the the tender uh, through tender search engine, you get all the detail that will help you identify partner to work with on the ground in the local countries, and we recommend consultancies for you, or put you together with the consultancy who help you write a bit translate materials and essentially improve chances of winning the bid. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Robert Miskuf. Um, I'm a CEO at uh, Pedal Consulting and uh, founder of uh, Tenderio platform. We are um, also partnering in uh, Tetra project. I would like to introduce you to the world of uh, business opportunities, um, public business opportunities. And uh, in the next couple of minutes, um, I would uh, give you a quick introduction into um, the general, general terms and also the framework that we would like to introduce. First of all, uh, maybe when you think of uh, public authorities on different levels, so be it uh, international institution like EU bodies, EU agencies, uh, UN organizations, etc., um, but also national government agencies, uh, ministries, uh, going all the way down to a regional or local level, you may think that uh, they have nothing to do with your uh, business. But um, it, uh, the contrary is true, actually, because um, all these uh, institutions, if they need to operate, and they need to operate, um, every time they need a service, product, or work, they basically need to purchase it from suppliers through through tenders through procurement so this is where um, the the world of public opportunities comes in uh, we also have a so-called development aid uh, to to support uh, less developed countries and regions uh, this may be bilateral from one country to another or uh, also multilateral through international organizations uh, so whenever there is a a public body or public authority, um, it can be perceived as a potential business partner. Uh, one more dimension to this is, um, is a situation where also private sector companies um, are obliged under law to um, issue public procurement, public contract, um, when they uh, are financed uh, with public money. But uh, let's uh, discuss this further. I also understand that uh, many of our clients and the stakeholders uh, are oftentimes confused with the uh, terminology and uh, it's really the whole, whole jungle of stakeholders and terms uh, used in uh, public procurement uh, field. Uh, I would like to clarify uh, some major differences um, and uh, maybe let's start with uh, what is tender versus what is grant. 
Um, as you can see on the slide uh, here, um, I would like to outline the three major differences. Um, tenders. Uh, tenders are happening when a public authority needs to purchase service or a product or a work. And they uh, have a very clearly um, speci specified objectives and uh, specifications. Um, and this is when they actually issue call for tenders. On a grant side, um, the public buyer doesn't necessarily have a clear idea. They have a problem that they want to solve. And uh, the proposals that are coming in from uh, vendors or suppliers may be completely uh, different from one to another. Another, um, I think, significant uh, difference between tender and grant is that in tender, you can make a profit. You clearly, uh, in your financial offer, um, s mentioned uh, what are the financial terms under which you are willing to sell your solution. And uh, when approved, uh, voila, you can uh, make a profit without uh, uh, any, any problem. In contrary, in grant, uh, you have a EU contribution and in the best case scenario, it can be 100% uh, co-financed. The third, uh, third uh, major difference is uh, actually uh, we, in terms of intellectual property rights. Normally in tenders, uh, you can, um, whatever you sell to a public buyer is a property of uh, the buyer. Uh, whereas uh, in a grants situations, uh, the intellectual property rights stays with um, the the winning consortium, implementing consortium, or uh, the, the su suppliers, depending on uh, how the consortium uh, intellectual property rights are set up. Let's move further. There are additional terms uh, that uh, pop up uh, when uh, dealing with, uh, or when, when doing business with uh, public authorities. Let's clear out uh, what is the difference between pre-commercial procurement and Public procurement of innovation. Well, pre-commercial procurement actually happens when public sector needs to modernize their processes, services, um, uh, and daily operations. And uh, they do it uh, by challenging market players to develop innovative solutions for addressing their specific needs. This also opens up uh, business opportunities for uh, supply side and, en uh, and uh, enables them to gain a leadership in uh, new markets. So, in, a, in other words, uh, the pre-commercial procurement is uh, procuring uh, research and development services, and it uh, runs in uh, competitive development phases. Uh, I will uh, outline this in my next slide. A uh, specific uh, factor that plays a um, significant role here is that uh, the risk is uh, shared between the supplier and between the buyer. As you can see on the diagram here, uh, and uh, let's go to the very left-hand side, um, at the beginning of pre-commercial procurement, uh, public buyer normally consults the market um, and uh, tries to understand what is feasible, what is available, what is not available out there, and based on that, uh, launches a tender. And pre-commercial procurement runs in uh, three phases, and uh, these uh, phases are as follows. The first one, is a phase where uh, the suppliers design solution and specific uh, and uh, specific uh, let's say uh, uh, characteristic of pre pre commercial procurement is that uh, buyers are procuring solutions from various vendors at the same time in parallel and they compare them uh, to each other uh, and then when going to the next phase which is uh, prototype development. We're moving to the uh, second uh, column. Um, let's say they can only choose uh, maybe not four, but three or two uh, suppliers. Uh, once all the milestones are met and the prototype is developed, we are moving again to the third phase um, where the original development and testing of limited volume of first step products and services is taking place. So in the beginning, we only had the, the market consultation 
with a very vague idea what um, is uh, currently available or not available on the market. And at the end of pre-commercial procurement process, we have um, validated and tested uh, R&D solution. This is where PPI or uh, Public Procurement of Innovation comes in. Let's call it phase four. Uh, if the product is not on the on the market yet, uh, but it is it already reached the level um, in phase three uh, and it is uh, ready to be deployed in the market, public authorities can purchase this innovation and deploy it on the market uh, in um, commercial volumes. So uh, this is where phase four actually represents already public procurement of innovative solutions. So what is it not pre-commercial procurement? Again, going back to the, um, to the terminology issue, public uh, pre-commercial procurement is not an R&D grant. Uh, it is, PCP is clearly demand driven. So the buyer, public authority, defines uh, the solution requirements, they select suppliers, they steer the development towards its needs, their needs, and um, it also determines which suppliers continue to the next phase. And the transaction is actually the purchase at market price. There is no funding rate. Um, in contrary, research and development grants are supply side driven. Uh, this is where the supplier defines uh, and steers the scope of the R&D it wants to do. And a transaction is a, a subsidy. Uh, it can be uh, funding rates uh, and eligible cost. Now, pre-commercial procurement is also not public procurement of innovation. As uh, mentioned uh, earlier, PPI, so public procurement of innovation, is commercial deployment of innovative solutions. So, for instance, public sector acts as early adopter of commercial volumes of innovative and solutions uh, newly arriving on the market. Why should you participate in, uh, in tenders, but uh, in speci specifically in pre-commercial procurement? Well, it, uh, first of all, it enables you to speed up um, time to market, uh, in, especially if you have a breakthrough innovations. Um, it is a concept where uh, you can share development risks with uh, the procurer. PCP also facilitates the access of new innovative players. And uh, it also provides first customer reference uh, that helps uh, win other contracts and also, uh, if needed, attract uh, in investors. What role does Tetra play in this? Well, we can help you win a business approach uh, and uh, certainly guide you through this uh, maybe not a completely clear um, clear uh, pathway uh, on securing contracts uh, with public bodies. We are going to organize, uh, in addition to this first introductory webinar, three very focused uh, webinars on uh, how to identify the tender. It can be abroad, it can be in your country. How to find the right partner. You know that many times uh, when you participate to a tender, uh, you actually need to team up with uh, someone who is ideally based on uh, in the country where the tender is located or has the right uh, reference, um, which, which helps you to, to secure the bid. And the third, um, let's say, let's call it the grand finale part, is uh, the webinar about how to prepare the winning bid. And here we will uh, really dive into uh, specificities um, related to administrative part, technical part, financial part, uh, how to distinguish yourselves from the competitors, uh, etc. So please stay tuned and uh, uh, we will gladly uh, back to you in case of uh, any questions you may have along the way. Next, uh, next, maybe the last point I would like to raise is that um, as mentioned before, uh, Pedal Consulting is also operating a Tenderio platform uh, where you will be able to do all these uh, things uh, like uh, identifying the partner, uh, finding the right um, tender, and setting up um, the winning strategy. 
uh, where you can do it uh, on the one platform under one one roof. Selected companies uh, will uh, be able to get um, also augmented uh, access to Tender Your Plus package, uh, which is uh, currently dedicated to 30 NGI representatives uh, that will be selected based on the outcomes of uh, boot camps and uh, how well you're performing. Thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to our collaboration and uh, please um, tune in also to our next webinar, which will be about uh, how to identify the tender abroad. This is Tom. Tom owns a painting company and wants to enter new international markets. But there is a problem. Tom speaks only English and doesn't know where to search for new business opportunities. He doesn't know anyone abroad and has no clue who his competitors are, nor under which conditions they are selling. Meet Mary, who doesn't suffer any of these issues, as she is a large furniture manufacturer with a dedicated team constantly looking for new customers abroad. But lately, her sales figures have gone the wrong way. Mary finds that attracting new customers is too expensive, and it has become ever more challenging to identify new deals. Luckily, they both came through Tenderio, the one-stop place for public tenders. On Tenderio, they simply entered a keyword describing their product and immediately found out which institutions wanted to buy it in various countries. Right after, Tenderio also introduced them to local partners who helped them to crack linguistic and legal challenges and assisted them to prepare their bid. On Tenderio, they found out who their potential competitors are and what was the size of similar contracts in the past, helping them to fine-tune their financial offer. Thanks to Tenderio, Tom and Mary are now automatically alerted whenever there is a new relevant business opportunity published anywhere in the world. Tenderio. Identify your tender, team up with partners, and bid!